and I'll be talking at about this level with Larry Drake. He is okay. Benny on L.A. Law. Okay. Welcome you to Dallas and Fort Worth. Thanks. And uh, I guess maybe I should say welcome back because you know mm -hmm. Dallas very well, don't you? Uh, uh, the former version of Dallas. It's about 10 years old now. Yeah. I was here between uh, 76 and 80. So. And you were acting? Mm -hmm. Some at uh, the Dallas Theater Center, Theater 3, various dinner theaters, a few films that came through town. Just enough to make a living, yeah. And did you go directly from Dallas to Los Angeles? Yeah. I was 30 years old <laughs> and uh, I was in the middle of this crisis. The lease was up in my apartment, my girlfriend had moved out, my family was going crazy, I had no money in the bank, so I decided to move. <laughs> it's a classic avoidance pattern. And, uh, and I, then I had to decide which direction. New York or LA and I decided since I was 30 years old to go ahead and go to LA maybe skip that New York step because the tradition is you go to New York then you kind of go to LA and I just said well we'll skip that maybe it'll work and I knew more folks in LA it was more Sun Belt they had like shopping malls and you drove cars places and it's worked out I didn't know till recently that it worked out but it seemed to work out the move but I guess the first real national recognition has been Benny in LA mm -hmm. law Yes, very much so, yeah. Um, I mean, I, uh, I've been doing a lot of regional theater and occasional film things, which are nice on the income tax uh, return at the end of the year, but nothing to kick it up to this level or move the career up to this kind of noticeable occurrence. Um, and the, the, the difference is amazing. I was doing fine. Now things are like great. So to go from fine to great in one fell swoop within a, a year uh, is kind of surprising. And the reaction is enormous. I, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging because I have to remind myself how many millions of people watch this. And it's, I'm usually reminded by how many people approach me on the street. And that kind of recognition is awesome. When you, uh, the first time you did Benny, mm -hmm. the first shot on, yeah. on L.A. Law, and then they decided after that to make you a regular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, did you have to stop and think about that, Larry, whether or not you wanted to play that character on a regular basis? Yes, but actually I was kind of wormed into it. It wasn't that clear cut. I did a one-shot deal the for end of the first season. This past season has been on a guest star week-to-week -week basis. I'm not a regular but I ended up being guest starring 14 out of 20 shows, I m might as well be a regular. Next season, I began to be an actual regular with a new contract and my name in, in, in the opening credits with everyone else for the next four years or however long they're on. So just doing it this year, I mean, it could have ended at any time, so I didn't know I was making a kind of commitment. And then I had to consider when the real contract came up, can I play this for four more years? And do they have enough story for that? But they wouldn't talk about less. They really wanted to explore this story. And I said to myself, this is a great working environment. This is a wonderful character. And even if I risk being stereotyped, that's the only negative I have to deal with. And it hasn't even happened yet, so I don't even, it's not really a negative. Have you been doing other things in addition to Benny? Not quite yet. I start a TV movie on Monday that's totally different. It's just like a regular guy. He's the best friend of the leading man who also happens to be a lawyer and, and, and tries a court case at the end of the TV movie. So, Is that for NBC? Uh, yes, I believe it is. It's a remake of Lever to Heaven. Oh. oh. Yeah. So, uh, well, then maybe the typecasting isn't going to, to exactly. be... Exactly. I just have to do enough of that other stuff to balance Benny out a little. So. I become Larry instead of Benny. That would be nice. Your friend Jeff Miller called uh -huh. me when he found out you were coming here. Uh -huh. Did they tell you that he called? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, he wanted to come, you know, and be a part of it. Yeah. And he was really very sweet. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, in talking with him, I kind of felt like I had a little bit of a an insight as mm -hmm. to what he was like. Now. Does he ever criticize your performance or find fault? Not that he's told me. Um, no, I mean, I've, I'll ask him. I don't, when I, when I hang around with Jeff, I don't ask him specifics. I don't show him a scene and say, what would you do? I don't ask specifics about his life. I just find that's a little rude or I feel like I'd be using him. Um, 
Instead, we just kind of hang around together. And I pick up little things here and there, and I use them when I find it's appropriate, or a general quality that, that, uh, that I'll use or not use. And also, I mean, 80% of what I do is, is me as the source anyway. And 20% is from research, and Jeff is part of that research. At first, Jeff wanted to say I was playing him. But I didn't even meet him till I'd already done three episodes, I think, of this. And so I tried to explain, I can't play you. I'm already playing something. <laughs> you know? uh, I said, you're the confirmation. You're information for me. And uh, said, no, he doesn't, he doesn't criticize. Mostly he said, it's, it's good. Now, what that means, that could be either being nice or being truthful. I'm not sure which, but we don't talk about it much. Uh, what do you find the most difficult thing about playing Benny? Uh, going far enough without going too far, walk, get, getting on the tightrope. I think I've done pretty well. My reasonably objective observations of myself on Thursday nights, I think sometimes I've gone a little too far and sometimes I've not gone far enough, but mostly little mistakes, so I haven't gotten caught yet going too far or <laughs> not far enough. It, I think it works generally. Can the director help you at all, or does he? Sure. Um, they don't always. I mean, a lot of them, in TV especially, a lot of directors are just kind of organizational geniuses in many ways. They just set up the shots, make sure the story gets told. They'll help you if you ask, but sometimes if you ask and you ask the wrong one, they don't have an answer. But the nice thing about L.A. Law is the directors are very good and they can usually handle those kind of questions. Some direct TV directors you walk up to, you ask them an actor kind of question and they stare at you like, you're from another planet. They don't want to deal with that. I did a TV movie uh, it was six, seven years ago, and they spent two hours hanging the lights. And I'm waiting around, and I had to run into the scene crying and upset and just, just, just terribly disturbed. And they spent all this time with the lights and the camera and doing all this kind of technical analysis. Then the director turned to me with no, no warning and said, OK, go out there about 100 yards and run in crying. And I said, excuse me. <laughs> I said, I, I said, I'm pretty fast, but I'm not that fast. I need at least a minute or two. And he went, oh, oh, yeah, of course. He had never, I mean, not that he was being callous. He was, it was, he was just never thought of it. He, I'd become a, another machine within the larger machine. And I was supposed to turn on and off. And I couldn't. And, and, but the next day, we were doing the, 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 the shooting the scenes, setting this up. And he'd tell me, now you go off, take all the time you want. And when you're ready, you call action. I mean, so he'd gone to the other extreme, so <laughs> too nice or not enough, so, you know. <laughs> what about your fellow actors on L.A. Law? How do they, do, uh, all right, let me rephrase it. Do they respond differently to Benny than they would if you were playing some other character? No, uh, well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, I don't think so, though. I mean, it's just a scene with Benny in it. But Benny being who he is affects the scene, and you have to analyze that in, as part of the scene. But no, I mean, they don't condescend to me. I don't think they condescend to Benny because the scripts don't. I mean, they have to do what the script says, generally. Some of them do. Um, I mean, I love the fact that, that they'll use words that are, are debatable. Uh, Brackman at one point, I think, said to Abby, your retardo is a go, which is not what you call socially acceptable. But it's nice to add a realistic element, because people still use that phrase. And Brackman being the cool, distant type that he was, that would be his way of kind of layering over, like dealing with this issue, or distancing himself from this issue. And I love the fact. I mean, um, I, my only, one of the few questions I've ever had about a script is, is Kuzak, when he defended Benny in court, referred to him as retarded. And that word itself is under debate in some circles because it's starting to, starting to get negative connotations. And I almost said, well, you know, the proper phrase for it is, and corrected them. And I said, no, because Benny wouldn't know that, neither would these people. And why start out with this image of things rather than maybe somewhere along the way a scene about somebody learning the proper phrase or the current phrase if it's not proper? But I like the fact that they mix. I don't think there's a lot of condescension or idealization of Benny in this. Is the more acceptable word uh, disabled? Developmentally disabled is, is apparently fine. Uh, mentally challenged, it's a bit cute, because aren't we all? Uh, but it's acceptable. Retarded is still acceptable. It's just fine. But 
I know there are, there are, there are it's starting. There's a, there, I've had people tell me not to use that word. Most people tell me it's okay, that deal with this every day. So, a little debate. What do those people call themselves? My friend Jeff Miller, you mentioned, he calls himself a slow learner. He doesn't like the word retarded, I think, because of the negative connotations. He, I mean, I've used it in front of him, and he doesn't get all upset or anything, but uh, he calls himself a slow learner, which is a rather accurate description. What kinds of fan mail do you get, Larry? Um, <laughs> there's a story in the National Enquirer, just a little sentence or two. I can almost quote this because it's so short. Who's the hottest actor on L.A. Law? Not Hunk Corbin Burnson, who gets 3,500 fan letters a week, but Larry Drake, who plays Benny, who gets 5,000 fan letters a week. Well, I don't know where they got these random goose eggs at the end of these numbers. I mean, at the, that point, I'd seen like five fan letters in, the, you know, like six months or something, or f no, more, you know, no more than 50. So, I, I mean, I don't... I don't know where they got these random zeros. And Alan Rachins, who plays Brackman, came up to me at a party and said, do you really get 5,000 fan letters a week? <laughs> and I said, no, Alan. Five, maybe. And he went, oh, thank God. I've been on two years, and I've only got 12. <laughs> he said he was feeling very inadequate. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, the type of fan letters from various organizations the, around the country, um, people who get touched uh, by this a little, and a lot of them, you read these letters and you feel like they write to everybody. I mean, somehow it's like their job to write to everyone who's ever passed in front of a TV camera and get their name down on a piece of paper or something, which I find a little bizarre. But you sign it and you send it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry, continued good luck to you in your career, you. whichever way it goes. And um, Benny is just such a beautiful character and you do it so well. Thanks. And uh, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk with you. It's nice to be here. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perk. And he said, oh, Perkola. <laughs> Perkola. <laughs> which, which is, again, pretty accurate. Perkola. It's all right. Yeah. For free take. Yeah. <laughs> Theater 3, you know, has a whole new setup now. Oh, now, what's going on? It's a little jewel I love, that, that space. Yeah. Well, um, it, it, it's more the uh, artistic uh, choices and things now. They're doing a lot, uh. lot of uh, gutsier stuff. Oh, okay. They done a whole deal on Quadrangle. We'll go by there. Okay. They really revamped it. It looks great. Yeah, now that's Theater uh -huh. 3 and yeah. then Theater that's Center. Right. Yeah. And then oh, Theater the Dallas Center. Theater Center I knew about with yeah. Adrian Hall. Yes, and and, right. and, and, and Mr. Baker, it's tough not to say anything, but yeah. Mr. Baker. Um, <laughs> my favorite Paul Baker story was, I didn't see it, I just heard about it. He's directing something, or Robin Baker Flat is in, and he's giving her a note, and he says, um, 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 you. And she turned and said, it's Robin, father. <laughs> we had to go to Oklahoma City to buy large, oversized female shoes. And there was this place actually downtown that had a 12D in a female shoe. And me and this other big guy in the cast, because they couldn't fit him either, were standing there modeling female shoes in downtown in Oklahoma right. City. <laughs> and people kind of double taking it in the, in the windows, and me just, all oh, you can do is wave. I mean, you got to do it. <laughs> I remember Jerome Kilty. Okay. Larry, did you have to stop and think twice when you realized that they wanted you to be a regular on L.A. Law? Yeah, but it wasn't as clear cut as that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, let's see, where do we go from there? Bobby, you might want to ask that one again. Oh, okay. I was just I was right in the process of switching oh, okay. over when you started right. that. Larry, did you have to think twice about becoming a regular on L.A. Law? Well, some. Well, yeah, but uh, well, it was a slower process and less of a clear-cut answer than that. Okay. okay. In what way is Jeff Miller a help to you? Um, well, he's my friend. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, that'll cut with uh, something that you, the way you got into it before, I remember. Okay. Um, all right.
Does Jeff ever criticize your performance? No, he's told me um, he's told me I was good. We don't really talk about those kind of specifics. Okay. And. Um, Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think I was probably all rocking right. all through the other one, too. No, you're pretty good. <clears throat> what is it like for you, all this fame and attention after all these years of being a working but unknown actor? Um, no beats indifference. <laughs> good, bad, and indifferent. It beats indifference. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what do these people call themselves? Developmentally disabled, uh, slow learners, uh, mentally challenged uh, people. Uh. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, what kinds of fan mail do you get? The ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, well, there's a cut anywhere on the head, really. Because <laughs> God knows I did that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fine. Uh, keep it too okay. shut. Yeah. What is the most difficult thing about playing Benny? Going far enough without going too far. Um, not overacting, showing up on time. <laughs> Fine. Okay, now just continue to talk about anything and okay. just keep, to, uh, oh, let me do reactions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Of all the things you did in Dallas, what, mm -hmm. what comes to mind? Uh, Texas, the, 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 the revival of Texas Trilogy. Uh, doing Learned Ladies at uh, Theater 3 and Jumpers at Theater 3. Uh, working with Larry O'Dwyer, one of, the, one, of the, one of the finest actors I've ever worked with. I've never known anyone who was as fresh as Larry O'Dwyer. Um, some people that drives crazy. Me, I love. I, I, he made me pay attention every night, more than I, I would have normally, just by the varying rhythms, without altering the play. It's fascinating. Uh, memories of Dallas. Working in dinner, getting my first job, my first union job. Um, hot summers. <laughs> Hot humans, <laughs> but I grew up in Oklahoma, so. That, <laughs> uh, last memory of Dallas was kind of depressing. It was um, driving by Love Field, looking across the field, and watching the sunset into smog, not the horizon. It was like this far above the horizon, and you could only see the top half of a very red sun. And I said, "This is becoming a big city with big city problems." That smog, that was very odd. So I was kind of ready for L.A. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that should do it, don't you think? Oh, Scott? Yeah. Okay.